hope everyone's doing all right at the moment. Um, so I haven't been able to get content out as regularly as I would have liked recently. Uh, what with lockdown and I'm also moving house at the moment and having kids in and out of school and it's just been very difficult. But what I have been able to do is make lots of things and I've been working on lots of different packs of Lightroom presets. I know a lot of you have been asking and asking when these are coming out so I thought I better release the first pack of these um, and this is a Fuji film emulation pack. Uh, this is for Lightroom and for Adobe Camera Raw in Photoshop. You do need the Creative Cloud versions of those for these to work because they use profiles and needs to be an up-to-date version of that. It's not going to work in older versions of Lightroom. Um, they use profiles and a few other features that only uh, appear in the newer versions of Lightroom. Anyway, so let me show you them. When you download this pack, you'll receive a zipped file. When you unzip that, you'll get two folders, one with some overlays, film frames, film dust, light leaks in, but also the main folder with your presets and profiles. To install these in Lightroom Classic, go to your develop module, go to the little plus here and go to import presets. There you can then select these. These are your profiles and your presets, import, and it should do everything for you. And here are your presets now. To install these in Lightroom CC, which should then sync with your mobile app, you go to the presets button here and click this ellipsis and go to import presets. Or you can just go to file and import profiles and presets. Then select all these, click import, and here are your presets. And these should now have also synced to your mobile application as long as you have a Creative Cloud subscription. To install these in Photoshop, open your camera raw feature. Go to this presets icon here. If they're installed in Lightroom, they should already be here, but if they're not, click this ellipsis and go to import profiles and presets. You can import them from there. So I've jumped into Lightroom Classic now to show you this. And over here in our presets menu, we have our presets, which are here. And these are not to be confused with color profiles, which are over here. Um, these are the Fujifilm color profiles. You just need to install these. You don't need to worry about applying them. They will be applied when you apply the presets. So in our list here, we have um, some grain options. We've got 35 mil and 120 medium format grain. We have some reset options. Uh, we have 20 different film stocks there and we have nine Lightroom generated frames. And I say Lightroom generated frames because I also have included some frames that I scanned from film that I have shot. These are saved as PNGs and you can apply them in Photoshop. I'll show you that in a bit. So our film stocks are divided into black and white. These are the ones that start with BW. We've got the instant ones, color instant CI. Those are these ones here. We've got the color negative, which are CN. These are these ones down here. Um, we've got quite a few of those. And we've got the color positive, the slide films that begin with CP. So in our black and whites, we've got Neopan 400, Neopan 400 CN, which is a black and white film that uses a C41 process. We've got Acros 100 and Acros 102, because um, they re-released that. Um, HC stands for high contrast, these are high contrast versions. And I've got one here with a red filter. Um, and a red filter, if you don't know, when you take black and white photography, it doesn't make the shot red. What it does is it takes the colors that are red and have red in them, like orange and pink and magentas and yellows. And it uh, raises the brightness of those and colors like blue and green, it will make darker. So for example, we've got an Acros 100 here, but if we want to put a red filter on that, we get lighter skin tones there. It might be easier to see with these books here because we've got some clear colors here. We've got a red book there, which is kind of gone a dark gray and this blue book, which you can still make out the black text on. But if we had a red filter, then the blue goes pretty much black and the red and the yellow become a lot lighter. So next down, we've got our color instant. This is just a bit of fun, really. It was the Instax stocks, which are sort of very degraded. They're just kind of, it was kind of Fuji's answer to Polaroid um, instant films. I've also got an instant film frame, which you can apply to these and some dust and things to give it that uh, more authentic look. So next down, we get to our color negative films. Um, so we've got Fuji color 100 and we've got Fuji color 100 warm. That just makes it a little bit warmer. Um, 
So what we can do is we can maybe like up the grain on that a little bit and we can add a, a frame like that. And you know, I think that's a little bit bright. So I'm just going to take down the exposure a little bit. And if I zoom in, you'll be able to see a kind of before and then after. We've got a Fujifilm 160C and I've also got a pulled version, which um, is a very sort of decontrasted, uh, very kind of light version of that that has those kind of pastel-y shades. I'll show you with um, maybe something with a lot of colour in like this image here. So it's quite a popular look at the moment, that kind of very sort of overexposed but very kind of flat look. Um, if we look at like the, how the pink here goes and stuff it's I find myself using this one quite a lot so next down we've got 400h which is a film I shoot a lot um, I've included three different frames uh, to apply to your images with this one um, it's got nice sort of soft tones um, a little bit of a green tint it's it's one of my favorite films this one um, I've also got a high contrast version so let's look at 400h high contrast on this shot here and we've got those lovely kind of slightly greeny filmy tones here so next down we've got our slide films our color positive films we've got um an astia 100f although this shot i think i think this would look good with an acros with a red filter because it'll make that sky really dark yeah i like that that's good i've got a provia and i've got a low contrast version of that to got a Sensia 200 expired which gives it that kind of expired film um, slightly sort of faded faded look so just bring the exposure down at this a little bit um, yeah, it's quite a nice one to play with not too versatile but it, it if you after that expired film look then this one works quite well but what I use much more of is the Velvia which is um, this one here, which has these lovely kind of punchy colors, gives it that slightly kind of Martin Parr type look. Um, really has a nice kind of, a really nice distinctive look to that. So there's a lot to play with here, but I've also included some bonus overlays and film frame scans that you can apply in Photoshop. So let me show you those quickly. So if we were to take a photograph like this, let's put the 400H HC on this and maybe let's give it a bit more grain it's a bit too much grain maybe take it down to there so I'm just gonna open this up in Photoshop so I'm here in Photoshop now and I've got um, these three folders here I've got my dust my film frame PNGs and some light leaks so I'm gonna start off with the film frames and I have uh, 160C, uh, this is a 400H, I'm gonna pick one of these, um, maybe two, I'm just gonna drag it on, it'll appear as a smart object. Now this is an eight by 10, so I'm gonna crop it down to eight by 10. So if we want to do, we can add a light leak. We've got a lot of different light leaks here, which I've scanned in. Um, so for example, if I put this one over here, um, what you need to do is you need to set the light leaks to a screen layer. Uh, this one's very full on, as you can see. Um, so I probably wouldn't want that one. Maybe something a bit subtler like this. Let's set this as a screen layer. Again, I don't really want any light leaks on this one here, but um, you can add them on if you want. We've also got a dust layer. I can just add this on here. And what you need to do here is to set this as an overlay layer. And if you want it a little bit softer, you can set it as a soft light layer. That's that's probably better for this one because it's not it's just a little bit of dirt and dust and stuff. Of course, you can crop in a little bit to make it look a bit more natural, like it's just being sort of cropped off in the scan. But I think now you would really be forgiven for thinking this was actually shot on 400H. So some of these looks are quite subtle, some are more full on. I mean, there's so much that goes into making a film look the way it does, from how it was scanned, to how it was exposed, to the 
temperature of the developer to the age of the film, how it was stored, there's a plethora of factors that make the final images look completely different from one another. Anyway, I'll leave a link in the description for anyone who wants to download and use these and it helps support my channel um, so I can make more videos. So uh, thank you to anyone who does decide to purchase this. It's taken a while to get these working just how I wanted them and I'm, so, I'm sorry it's taken so long, especially for those people who've been asking, but I'm happy with them now and I've been using them for a while. I wanted to make sure they were right, um, but yeah, I'm really happy with where they're at. Um, so I hope you enjoy them. So there's a link in the description to download these um, if you fancy getting them and supporting me and my channel. And if you've bought anything from me at all or you're a patron, um, then I just want to thank you very, very much for supporting me and my channel because this enables me to have a channel and to make the YouTube videos that I do. Um, genuinely, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Anyway, uh, take care everyone and I will see you again soon, bye bye.